Hi everybody, Brian Balrick, Production Manager with Roland DGA in Irvine, California. Here today to take another question from the field and today the topic is the spot color library and just the basics of uh, the application, how to use it. So we've already got VersaWorks running so I'm taking a look at this first file here. It's just a simple logo or a label actually. Um, but let's say that the client is very specific and he is really interested in matching several of the colors. As you can see, the main ones are this orange uh, field here. We've got some goldenrod, a little bit of red, more magenta. And there's some little bits of green. Those are less important. But clearly there's a, there's a bulk of orange in this particular label. So what to do? So... Uh, the good news is you're not left without good tools. We actually have several really good tools built into the RIP, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So, right off the bat, um, let's go up to the media menu. And if you look, you'll see here several um, color charts. You'll see color chart type 1, type 2, a color selector, chips an orange color chart. That one's going to be a key component to this particular request. The color, orange color selector and the orange color chips. So let's just go ahead and click on this orange color chart right here. And you'll see it actually gives you a thumbnail representation of what it is and what it looks like. I've already prepped and got it loaded. So if we go here, here is the orange color chart already loaded. Let's pop it open. And I've grown it to fit the sheet that's on the machine right now, so it's very large. But I wanted to be able to kind of display it in a larger fashion. Um, you can see right at the very top, and I'm actually going to blow this up just a little bigger. There we go. So right at the very top, some pure orange ink colors. And they're broken down from a 0, 1 to a 10. 10 being 100% orange ink. But that's the beauty part. That's all it is. It'll never be a mix of other colors. These are the, it's basically orange in different quantities, all the way up to 100%. And they're locked in as far as how they're printed. And that is the whole basis of the um, spot color library that we have in the software. Every color that you see on this chart, each one of them is locked in. Literally, if you were to take this chart, set up your rip for a very specific vinyl that you use all the time or if you wanted to have this chart for multiple materials which we would recommend uh, because the chart looks different on different materials uh, it's a very important um, point to make there but once you've got these printed on your printer every single one of these colors is ultimately reproducible again and again and again with no variance so the concept is this client comes in, he shows you his logo, and you take it over, you literally lay it next to this chart, and you start windowing in and saying, you know what, it sure, it looks like uh, this color right here, let's say 09, is the color that matches what you need. The good news is if the client's in agreement with you, circle that color, make some notations, and in your RIP, when you go to work on that job, you're going to select that fill color. And from that point forward, you've closed the loop. You've literally got a working uh, system for that client, for that color, every single time on that media. That's the concept of the whole closed loop system here for color management and how Spot Color is helping you out. It gives you this repeatability um, to guarantee that your clients are happy. They're always getting the same color off that same printer, off that same media each and every time. So let me show you a little bit about how it actually works and, and how to take control of it. So let's see, we've got this logo here, the Tassos logo. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at color chart type one. Let's go ahead and open that up. So these are all different color charts you are free to print at leisure anytime you want. They're built into the rip. I'm going to grow this up so it's a little bigger and then I'm going to zoom in a little bigger as well. So this is just a more elaborate. This, this, the other one I showed you is specifically about producing orange colors. This one is a much larger spectrum of color that you can uh, take a look at here. But the nice thing about this is you can see as I zoom closer 
So in the PR01 column, it goes from 01 up, or I'm sorry, PR01 is a column and the row is A through K. So if you logically carry this out, so a PR01K is this orange right here, and it turns out that's 100% Roland ink being put out. Okay? That, again, it's no variance, it's always going to be that. Uh, and you carry over here, here's 100% green. So it, I, I always enjoy using these colors because if you've ever wanted to see what our ink looks like each channel alone and just put a, put a portion of it down on a material and see how it looks, this is how you would achieve that. You would create a file in Illustrator or any other design software, bring our color library in. It's a separate file that's included with your software. Once that's loaded, you simply select that color, PR01K, and that's, that's the yellow you're going to get. Once that's there, you save the file and simply print it out. And I'm going to show you the settings here in just a second. But that's how this works. You can have a pure yellow, pure green, pure orange, pure cyan, blue, magenta, whatever it is you're looking for, and every variation in between. Where we've taken the guesswork out in each one of these colors, and I'm going to show you this real quick, Go up to your uh, pull down here. We're going to go down the rows until you get to convert spot color. Currently, they're locked out, but I want you to just notice that each one of these is made up. So RVWBK01A, so that's way over down into the, I believe it's right here actually. And that color you'll see actually is nothing more than 0% of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. 02A zero cyan zero magenta zero yellow and black at 4.7 so you get the idea we've literally for every one of these chips have a new calculation of what inks to, to jet to fire and at what quantity each and every time it's a locked in system of color many of us have heard the term pantone very similar system the only difference is Pantone requires use of Pantone inks that you purchase directly from Pantone. Our machines use Roland ink. Well, here we have the Roland uh, Spot Color Library, and it's the same concept. Produce these colors on a very specific media, on that specific printer, same with the same print modes, you know, high quality, unidirectional, and you will get repeatable color, and that's what it's all about. You've got clients that want to be happy, they want specific color, this is the best way you can do to achieve it. So, real quick, I'm going to show you how you'd go about producing your first chart. And like I said, there's several that are built in, and this will get you uh, started. So let me show you. First and foremost, you need to pick the machine that you want to work with. Every machine that we manufacture that produces color uh, can produce these color charts. So, let's start with the BG2 with orange. So very important point you need to set up your QA it's very specific this process requires you to only work with QA uh, it's kind of a part of the way the system works it has to feed it when you ask to get to produce that um, chip chart it's going to direct it immediately and always to QA so just remember that so we're going to go to edit QA take a look at that and we're going to make the settings that we want. Now remember, what we're doing is we're locking in how this chart is going to be produced. So just real quick, this gentleman or whoever came in with this label request, let's say it's a bulk job. You know for a fact that you're going to want to run this at standard buy die because you need the throughput. Well, when we go to produce this color chart, we need to lock that in as well. So let's take a look here. Uh, the, the media size is fine. Let's go down here. Now, again, this is where we start have to, we have to drill in and start setting some very specific values. This will make this work. First and foremost, you have to pick the material that is going to be used for this project. We have to start locking in these values. So here's the vinyl. It's just going to be the Roland uh, Glossy Calendar vinyl. Here's where we're going to say we want standard mode. That's only a 10 pass, but we know for a fact that's what we need for this job. Half toning is good at air diffusion, but again, you, you can choose what you want through here for what you feel this job requires, but we're going to produce this chip chart and always make sure that the chip chart was produced in the exact same manner that you want your projects to be produced. 
if we start changing all this later, you're not going to get the same color because you've changed, let's say, to high quality. You've now changed how the printer produces its prints. So as long as these stay the same, you'll have good results. So here we are at standard, 10 pass interpolation. I'm going to move that to bicubic. We'll keep it at bidirection because we know we need the throughput. And for true rich color, that's what we want for this particular type job. All right. So let's go down a little bit more. We don't need to worry about individual colors. We do want to convert spot color if it has it. Um, in this case, because we're producing the chip chart with these settings, I do want to have convert spot color turned on. Moving down, no need for marks. Um, I'm going to take care of some of the settings here. I'm going to make sure that my page space is set to a low. That's basically how much to feed out after the job's printed. Overprint's fine. Printer settings, printer settings, that's all good. Other than that, everything else is fairly superfluous. Don't need it, so I'll just hit OK. It'll ask me, are you sure you want to save these queue settings? I do. Good. So you get the point. I've just locked everything in. This is how these labels are going to get produced. More importantly, we now are going to produce the chip chart. Now, the one I know specifically that we'd want to focus on this one is going to be that orange chart. So notice when I go to media, pull down, go all the way down. We're almost near the bottom and we're at the orange chip chart. I'm going to click on that. And it just says the following job will be printed. Do you want to continue? So I'm going to say OK. Now look over to QA and you'll see this job just show up. So again, these are built into the RIP. They already exist. You're just invoking them. You're asking the RIP to pull from its source and bring that job in automatically. And now by double clicking, I'm going to show you what happens here. So there's the job. I'm going to grow it up a little bit and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so it's nice and big on the screen. And take a look at some settings here. Notice right away, if I start trying to modify any of the settings to do with this job, guess what? Can't. They've been locked out. There's a good reason. Again, the whole theory of the system is, is that you're locking color. You want to basically force it into a very repeatable pattern. So it wouldn't make any sense to now make changes. Uh, again, you made those changes when you set the queue settings. So it adopted that this file now has, has inherited those settings that you put in earlier and they're locked in. So taking a look, sure enough, it was standard mode, just like we basically all these settings that we set into the queue prior are still here. They're locked in. Moving down again, no changes can be made. It's going to produce these colors. Um, Let's see here. Everything, yeah, everything got inherited. So that's it. Say OK. And now, if I want, I can go ahead and click on print. It will print that uh, orange matching chart, at which point you'll be able to take the chart off the printer. That is now something you want to hang on to. Um, I usually keep those around and um, store them. Uh, they're a great tool to have. I mean, again, when any time a client comes in, any time someone asks me for a specific job and wants specific colors, I can pull these out for that specific printer and say, here's a common material. And I like to have these printed on at least two or three of the most common material that we use in the shop. So for me, that would be glossy calendared vinyl, matte calendared vinyl, performance gloss cast vinyl. And Remember, we need to produce these charts at different print modes, um, quality settings, so that you literally have a variance. You could say for the client that you know that needs the throughput, you show them the ones at standard by die, and for the ones that need this utmost photographic reproduction with the tightest detail, you'll want to pull out the ones for high quality. And it just makes perfect sense. Now you've got a closed system of color and you can simply work with the client there and make sure that you're going to meet his expectations because you can now feel very confident that color is something I can achieve. Do you sign off on it? Is it are we in agreement that if I produce these, these uh, jobs for you and I get this color, you're going to be, uh, this, will, this is a, a approved work. What more can you want? <laughs> approved work and everyone's happy. So again, the Roland Spot Color Library, extremely useful tool. Highly recommend that you take the time 
produce the charts that you need for your shop. Again, just showing you right at the top here, it's very simple to do. Take the printer, set up QA for the settings you need for that material, then just go to media and select the color chart that you're interested in. We give you a variety. There's several to choose from. The most common one, honestly, is probably chart number one. And let me show you what that looks like. It's again, it's that larger one that gives you a very broad spectrum of color. There we go. Grow that up and do a zoom on it. Yeah, so this hits so many targets. There's such a variety of, to, of color to choose from, and I use this all the time, and it's a perfect tool. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I look forward to seeing you in another one. Thank you.